speakers and uh, also to Serge for this unexpected but very successful moderation. Uh, with this last roundtable, it is now time to take stock of what has been said today here, as well, and importantly, to point the, to the way forward. I am thus pleased to give the floor for one minute to our much esteemed partners. So I'm just going to call you on stage. Uh, Rashana Shrestha from uh, the Asian Development Bank, Frédéric Audras from Agence Française de Développement, Elisa Muzzini from the Council of Europe Development Bank, David Jackson from United Nations Capital Development Fund, Damian Sarban from GIZ, and Christian Louis from Decentralization and Local Governance. Thank you all. So we're, we're running slightly behind schedule, so I'm just going to ask you for one message from one, um, the, the way forward for the World Observatory uh, for Subnational Government Finance and Investment. And we can go from, perhaps from Rashana from the, the, at the end to here. Rashana, the is yours. All right, actually, uh, we are very happy that uh, we partner uh, with you all in this uh, uh, World Observatory. And our messages, I mean, actually, we, uh, we really like this uh, kind of uh, you know, information because, as I mentioned, like ADB is, does a, a variety of things, so reforms. So we provide uh, technical assistance. Uh, we have like Tax Hub trying to improve the tax administration, et cetera. And all these uh, will only help uh, by uh, good data and information. So, uh, you know, this uh, really helps us provide a better support or more effective uh, support to our developing member countries. So uh, I think going forward, we'd be using a lot. We talked about a better utilization of this, in, uh, you know, this product. And uh, uh, we really will be using a lot of this uh, in uh, designing and uh, formulating our uh, reform programs. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Monsieur Audras. Well, similarly, just like, uh, well, I'd say that uh, AFD uh, has been working for a long time now on decentralization issues and uh, support uh, to decentralization at all the levels, direct or indirect finance. And of course, we will continue that work, that line of work. I will send the link uh, to all our agencies, uh, approximately 100 agencies throughout the world. AFD has about 100 agencies, and I think that they should uh, they should be aware of your of this publication and the data that is available, especially when it comes to uh, support uh, to uh, sustainable cities. That uh, represents uh, three million additional uh, commitments uh, per year. And that requires, obviously, a good database and uh, analysis and research on a systematic basis, and we shall continue in this direction. Well, thank you very much, and we do appreciate uh, this uh, dissemination work that you're doing. The World Observatory since uh, 2019, and we see great value in the work of the World Observatory because uh, local and regional governments are so central for achieving the social mandate of the, of the CEB. And we had today a very rich discussion, and I think this discussion has confirmed that um, um, some national financing and multi-level governance are absolutely central to enable uh, some national government to address multiple crises, first and foremost, uh, climate emergency, and also to reduce uh, territorial disparities. So I um, just want to conclude by reiterating that the, the CB support for the observatory. And um, I, I believe that the work of the observatory has never been more important and that we do need the World Observatory to build and share data and knowledge that is robust and that is comparable uh, in order to strengthen the resilience of some national governments. Thank you so much. Next in line, David Jackson. Thank you very much indeed. So I'd like to echo all the comments made so far. You know, UNCDF has also been very privileged and proud to have been involved since the beginning of this process. But I think, you know, perhaps we, this is also a very useful role for OECD. I think, you know, there are lots of reports that are published 
here at OECD all the time. I mean, your bookshop is just outside and it's, it's full of them. But uh, um, this can be something more than a report which stays on the shelf. I mean, this can be something which you is used to measure the progress in this area and there's a benchmark, a benchmark for the ratings, for the, some of the investments we've been talking about, some of the structural changes to the financial uh, system so that uh, local government finance does become a vehicle for development finance. And also changes to the way that central governments perceive local governments. So when it comes to grant finance, when it comes to fiscal sharing of the fiscal pie, that they don't forget the important role of intergovernmental fiscal transfers as part of their uh, financial arrangements. And also, of course, own source revenue to free up local governments to collect that. So I think it has to be used as an advocacy document, but also having the OECD stamp on it, I think, is very important. So it's, 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 let's use it going forwards as a, as, a, as, a, as a benchmarker and an advocacy document. Thank you. Thank you. We'll keep that stamp on. Um, next in line is uh, Christian Louis. Yeah, many thanks. Um, DLOG is partner of this initiative since um, the second edition of this report. And um, I'd like to congratulate UCLG and, and OECD for this conference, for this uh, very important third edition. Um, I'd like to quote here um, from the excellent session on, on property taxation. Um, this is useful and important to collect information and inform and convince policymakers. And it, this was in the context of property taxation, but I'd like to add um, here to strengthen decentralization and local governance reform processes. Because we heard many times today how important um, the, those processes are to tackle the, the, the emerging and multiple crises we are facing. Um, I'd also like to uh, invite anyone who is not partnering uh, at the moment to partner in, in this important initiative. It's a public good. Uh, it's important to benchmark, to analyze, um, to provide a standpoint, a comparable data set. And yeah, many thanks. And um, it's a pleasure to be part of this. Thanks. Thank you very much. And last but not least, uh, Damian Salvan. Uh, thank you. The German Development Corporation appreciates the work of Wofi very much. Um, we've started the collaboration um, a little bit more than a year ago, and we had a particular interest in the property taxation data um, and to, to close the data gap. And we're really satisfied to see uh, such insights in the new in third edition. So. Um, our goal was to um, focus from the, the development uh, perspective to have a basis for dialogue. Um, and we had, through our collaboration, already a webinar how to enhance property taxation, where we managed to have different uh, international organizations, donors, um, political representatives talking about their experience. And that's what we wanted to have. Um, so the exchange, the knowledge, knowledge exchange, and to bring the dialogue on a completely different level. So uh, we would like to continue it that way, and we hope, and yeah, probably my recommendation for the, for the uh, way forward would be to uh, close further the data gap and encourage uh, countries to provide uh, the much needed data. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to all of you. I think a round of applause is, is needed. <laughs> I am now going to give the floor to our main partner. Um, it is, I'm now pleased to give the floor again to Serge Allou, uh, Special Advisor at UCLG, for his final remarks. Hello. The final remarks. Uh, je très bref. Uh, I'll be quite brief. Uh, this uh, has already been said. But I would, I can, I would like to repeat it. It is not. We cannot uh, implement uh, policies, public policies, uh, without uh, the information that uh, will make it possible for all stakeholders to meet around the same table and to discuss reforms. It is absolutely crucial to gather all this information at national level, but also at loc at, it, at the international level. Because otherwise, we will never make uh, headway. It's uh, quite simple, but I think it was worth uh, saying. And I, w I would like to be brief, but I'd like to emphasize that we're talking about uh, a collective effort, 
135 countries uh, have been covered. Uh, we the, the coverage was distributed between the different uh, uh, OECD member countries. Uh, we uh, w we had different methods of work. Uh, we worked with uh, southern countries, where access to data or di availability of data uh, is not always uh, obvious, to say the least. So it was an enormous work. We uh, called upon uh, 50 experts, 50 experts for the uh, countries that uh, the UECGL uh, covered, UCLZ. Gee, sorry, 50 experts uh, that uh, searched for the information because, of course, the information is not public. Information is power. And when you retain information, it's because you want to retain uh, power. So those experts had to search for this information. They had to um, they had to uh, w look to uh, talk to uh, ministries and uh, uh, finally uh, succeed in collecting data that were reliable. Of course, this uh, uh, data had to be validated, had to be verified. So again, uh, uh, an enormous uh, workload. Uh, you see the product, uh, but uh, you should also take into account the process that led to the product. Uh, uh, it was a an enormous and in a considerable work, and I would like to pay tribute to those experts. They could not be, uh, they could not come here, but I think uh, we owe them a lot. And I would like to pay tribute to, to my colleagues uh, in uh, UCLG, all those, uh, all my colleagues who worked with me in order to structure that uh, uh, that information and presented in a structured manner. I'd like to uh, thank Paloma in particular. Paloma has done an extraordinary work. Contacts uh, with the experts, uh, validation uh, of the data, checking the uh, profiles and the technical uh, information sheet. Well, thank you very much, Paloma. Mathilde, who has left us, unfortunately, and also Kader. I'm going to retire. This is uh, my last event uh, with you, and Kad Kader uh, will replace me. Uh, he will follow on your work on behalf uh, of uh, uh, UCLG. So thank you, everyone. And uh, one last tribute to my friend Rudiger. Just one point. All this information that was gathered, that was collected, this information was the subject of many discussions within the framework of a project supported by uh, GIZ in Western Africa. And uh, we gathered around a table uh, different countries uh, from Western Africa and uh, different stakeholders uh, within these uh, countries. And we opened a discussion building upon uh, the observatory uh, data. So we have had this opportunity to work together, and this really contributed to the progress we've made in concrete terms. I do hope that we can continue along the same vein. Thank you very much for your attention. Merci beaucoup. Merci to Dorothée Alain Dupré, Head of the Regional Development and Multilevel Governance Division at CFE. Dorothée, the floor is yours. Merci, Michael. Merci, Serge. Thank you, uh, Michael. Thank you, Serge. These are the very last minutes uh, uh, before the cocktail that will be uh, offered to you. Thank you. I will be very brief. Uh, but let me start indeed by uh, thanking uh, again all of you for joining uh, today. And I want to thank particularly uh, UCLG, of course, for their long standing uh, cooperation with the OECD, Emilia, Serge, Paloma, Kader, all the experts who have contributed, all the regional sections of, uh, of UCLG which were represented uh, uh, today. 
And all our key partners, uh, UNCDF, the French Development Agency, the Asian Development Bank, the Development Bank of the Council of Europe, the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs, DILOG, GIZ, without whom, of course, all this work would have been uh, impossible. So thank you for all your support. Thanks for just highlighting the ways forward. This is pretty, pretty clear. I would like to thank the OECD team, which has worked uh, uh, very, very hard to produce this work, uh, in particular Isabel, who is here and who has been uh, coordinating uh, the, this massive, massive work. Uh, Charlotte, who is here, Charlotte, uh, Mar Margot, Mikael, uh, Auntie, Courtney, uh, Grace, Mathieu, Rose, Majda, Isidora, Manuel, uh, uh, Leslie, Jeannette, uh, Lisa, for all the support, all the colleagues uh, who have helped, the Regional Development Policy Committee and its delegates, and Luc Faraldi, who is with us uh, today, uh, Media Active, uh, which has helped for the country profiles and uh, all the, the websites. Thanks very much. Let me just highlight very quickly three takeaways and, and ways uh, forward. First, and it was clear uh, throughout the day, uh, this e initiative is unique for many different reasons. First, because it's the only global platform that brings together this set of data and this information, comparable information about multi-level governance on such a large scale. That's a fact. Uh, the value added of the World Observatory lies not only in the data and in the knowledge that it brings, but also in joining forces, in putting multi-level governance in practice by working together, representative of national government with the OECD, sub-national government, UCLG, development banks, international organizations, think tank, uh, academics, uh, experts to produce all this knowledge, and this is quite uh, unique as a type of partnership. This is very much the value added of this uh, World Observatory. Second, because this WOFI is about making multi-level governance systems work better. This is mo more important than ever, we heard throughout the day. National and subnational government need to partner to address all the complex set of crises we are unfortunately fa facing from climate to energy crisis to infrastructure, recovery from COVID, digitalization, and so on. No level of government can respond adequately to these challenges alone. The WOFI helps support the multilateral agenda on all these topics. And for, uh, for this, the, the WOFI needs to be known as much as possible. And you heard today from uh, Lamia and Courtney the example of the toolkit on mobilizing funding and financing for infrastructure investment in regions and cities, which was just endorsed by ministers of finance of the G20 uh, two weeks ago in, in Washington. And the development of this toolkit was possible because of the World Observatory uh, data. So this is just an example among many others. And this is linked to my last and final point, which is about the next step of the, of the WOFI. Since 2016, the, the, the World Observatory has, uh, has advanced a lot, but there is still a lot of work uh, ahead of us and the content with the support of our partners will continue to update the data, to expand the country coverage, to improve the quality of the data where needed. We also intend to develop more in-depth regional analysis. For example, we are currently developing specific analysis for Asian countries and we'll organize a, a webinar in, in November. This is also what the WOFI offers, uh, the possibility to go in-depth uh, for certain regions or groups of countries. But the priority is also very much on the dissemination and impact. And this was mentioned several times since the beginning of the, since the morning and in the concluding uh, remarks. The, the WOFI is really a public good that can be more used. And for this, all of you in this room and uh, online uh, have a specific role to play. It's up to you all, key partners, users of this work, to disseminate the WOFI as widely as possible. You all have a key role to play in making it known by governments at all levels, uh, all around the, the world. At the same time that we ex ex 
expand the, the use and the impact of this uh, work. We also hope to continue to expand the, the partners that support the observatory and, and thank you to the Delog colleague for, for already making a call uh, to, to new partners. Uh, we are fortunate to already have a, a high level of uh, multi-stakeholder engagement through our key partners and our steering committee. But there is still plenty of room uh, at the table for any other uh, interested partners to, to engage and, and, and join uh, this, uh, this work. So the more we advance, uh, the more ambitious this initiative has, has become, and the most challenging it is to maintain the, the level of ambition. So we count on, on you, and we look forward to organizing the next steering committee early next year in 2023. So you are war warmly invited to join the steering committee, and you are also warmly invited to join now the, the cocktail uh, in the Marshall Room uh, of the uh, OECD, where the Marshall Plan was, uh, was sent more than 60 years ago. So thank you again to all of you. Thanks to the interpreters. Thanks a lot. Sorry for the delay. And see you soon. Right, so to get to the cocktail, which is, I think, the main piece of information at this point, you please just go to the right, to the left. Yeah, sorry. To the left and then upstairs. <laughs> You'll see the signs. And then on the right, in the garden. Okay, so you go left, you go up, and then you go to the right. Thank you.